Hello dear students, welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Rimalpreet Kaur, Assistant Professor Khalsa College of Education, Ranjit Avenue, Amritsar. Today, we are going to discuss about grading and marking system. After going through this unit, you will be able to describe the concept of grading system, able to discuss what is marking system, enumerate the need of grading and its importance over numerical system of marking, well, students, the word evaluation is an inseparable process of education. However, the word is used in different contexts, so its meaning has various connotations. To evaluate means to form judgment on the level of achievement and assumed that there is a predetermined level available. For that, we used words like appraise, analyze, assess, examine, grade, review, rank, judge, and so on. Generally, pupils' evaluation is conducted through periodical tests and annual examinations. Marks obtained in tests and examinations show that whether the student is performing well or not, whether the institution is performing well or not, and whether the teachers are teaching effectively or not. An analysis of the present day examination and evaluation system reveals that it has become very outdated and obsolete because of various shortcomings like it is an element of subjectivity, it does not meet the goal of education, emphasizes on memorization, generate a lot of mental stress and leads to unnecessary competition among the students and mainly it hardly leave any scope for innovations. In the light of the above mentioned points, there is a strong need for examination reforms or an alternative system to judge the student's performance. In this present unit, we shall discuss about the new technique of evaluation that is grading and marking system. Now, let's understand the region of grading system. Brokhart provides a discussion of the history of grading in the United States. This research suggests that the first categorical grading system was used at Yale in 1785 and classified a student as optimi, that is best, second option, that is second best, inferiors, that is lesser, and pisors, that is worse. In 1813, Yale adopted a numerical scale by which students here assigned grades between 1 to 4 with the decimals used to reflect intermediary levels. Some universities developed scales with more categories, that is 20, whereas others tried simple pass-fail grading. By 1900s, percentage grading was common in secondary schools and in 20th century it became a practice matter in universities. But in 1910, educator became to raise questions on the reliability and accuracy of its use with different categories or scale points. A number of grading issues come to the forefront. Additionally, lot of debate was organized regarding its merits. Finally, efforts were made to expand the purpose of grades so that they not only come to document the student's level of academic achievement but also served to enhance the learning of students. By 1920s, the use of letter grades that is A, B, C, D and F become the most common practice. Now the next question arises which involves a decision regarding the basis for grades that is should grades be assigned purely on the basis of academic achievement or other characteristics of students should be taken into consideration? Should other factors such as students' attitudes, behaviors, class participation, punctuality, study habits be considered for assigning grades? After the identification of the importance of these non-achievement factors, assessment experts recommended that the actual grading system should be based on the actual academic achievement of the learner and if necessary then teachers should assign a separate grade for these non-achievement factors. The national policy on education 
has recommended the replacement of marks with the grades is not enough for convincing others to advocate it. Results of the universities and college examination, whether that is internal assessment or final examinations are considered in terms of grades in India. The Central Advisory Board of Education said that for all public examination, the result should be declared subject-wise and furnished in the form of grades. The raw marks, even when given by the examiner, should be converted into letter grades before being made available to students. The traditional system of marking is familiar to teachers, students, parents and to the public. In our examination system, marking has been followed for a long time and most of the educational system and institutions depend on the same practice. It means that whatever the learner has learnt over a period of one or two years course can be expressed in terms of his or her performance on a three hour test and the performance is measured in numerical scores. A traditional marking system which is based on a 0 to 100 scale appears to be an absolute scale indicating the exact level of student's achievement. But in a real sense, this is a relative scale. The real meaning of marks can be drawn when the number of an individual can be compared to those assigned to other students. Still, there are certain standard errors of measurement like human weakness, subjective evaluation is not very transparent. Many research studies reveals that the same examiner given different marks to the same individual on the same paper when it is examined twice. Apart from this, there are also variation in the range of marks obtained by the students in different subjects. Further, the standard and pattern of the question paper in the same subject also vary from time to time. Considering all these points, there is a need of conversion of marks into grades. Now, understand what is the procedure of awarding grades. There are various procedures of awarding grades which need to be explained for the adoption in particular situations. First is letter grades. Letter grades are the most common procedure of reporting students' progress or a most common symbol system. Nowadays, majority of schools are in practice of using letter grades. These letter grades are typically interpreted as A for excellent or superior achievement, B for above average achievement, C for average achievement, D below average or marginal achievement, E for failing or poor performance. These symbols are provided in report cards with the plus and minus symbols which indicates finer distinctions between the letter grades. This letter grade system is very widely accepted and understood by the students, teachers, parents, administrators and employees. But it has some limitations also. One of the most significant limitation of letter grade is that they are only a summary statement and convey relatively little useful information beyond the general level of achievement. Another limitation is that the specific meaning of letter grade varies from class to class and from school to school. Consequently, grade A in one school may represent performance similar to O grade. Finally, it fails to indicate the student's actual level of mastery and because of this, averaging of letter grades often results in loss of information or misinterpretation of the student's actual achievement. Next type is numerical grades. It is an another procedure of grade system which are very much similar to letter grade and are most commonly used in schools. Numerical grades provide more precision than letter grades. In this, excellent performance is represented by a grade A, may be further divided into numerical grades ranging from 100 to a grade of 90. Many schools and colleges often used both the system of grading means letter grades equivalent for the range of numerical grades like 
numerical grade 90 to 100 is equivalent to letter grade A, numerical grade 80 to 89 is equivalent to letter grade B, 70 to 79 is C, 60 to 69 is equivalent to D and below 60 is equivalent to F. Like letter grades, the merits of numerical grades are, it provides a summary of marks for a year work, numerical grades are easily averaged to obtain the correct final work, finally it is widely understood by students, teachers, parents and administration. In this type also there are some limitations as, the discriminations are finer than human can really make. Second limitation is that it is not possible to determine the real difference between a grade 77 and a grade of 78 or between a grade of 85 and a grade of 86. And finally, as we are not sure about what a grade mean since standard may vary from school to school. Next type is pass fail grades or verbal description. Since 1970s, the pass-fail grading system reached its popularity, but because of its shortcomings, this approach is not employed everywhere. Verbal descriptions such as excellent, above average, satisfactory or need improved are given. This procedure simply replaces traditional letter grades with verbal description in order to avoid the ambiguity regarding marks. Another way of grading is direct grading. Direct grading is done on the basis of the prior criteria prepared by the evaluator or by the agency like school board or university. Generally, symbolic or letter grades that is A, B, C, D, F are considered as direct grading. In this process, after the award of direct letter grades, the numerical value of each grade has to be added up and tabulated. The sum of the numerical values of obtained grade is then divided with the number of questions evaluated in answer script for the final calculation. This total is again converted into a letter grade. The traditional practice of awarding only marks is also not untouched with mistakes in totaling. Similarly, the implementation of direct grading where the work of awarding marks and convert it into grades is a tedious process and not free from mistakes. Generally observed limitations are, direct grading is also not very transparent by nature and cannot be applicable for a large size of public examinations. Secondly, when number of questions are many and contains different marks, it could be only applicable in house evaluation with a certain condition that number of items to be evaluated should be very few, number of students has to be taken into consideration, works related to project, assignment, seminar should be evaluated. Another is indirect grading. Indirect grading is related to providing marks or grading, though marks which is a traditional practice by school teacher, indirect grading is based on two standards, relative grading and second is absolute grading. Relative grading involves comparing each student's performance to that of a specific reference group. So before assigning the assignment, a division has to be made regarding the number of students to be appeared in the examination, question paper or items to be put under various categories depending upon the range of the scale, whether it is 5 point, 7 point or 9 point scale, so that learners to be put in, into various grade categories. Therefore, in relative grading, range of grades change for each subject examination, year of examination. On the basis of this, we can say that relative grading successfully overcome problems of the variations in the mark yielding nature of different subjects, variations in the standards of papers of different years and differences in the groups of examinees taking the examination in different years. Relative grading referred as grading on the curve because whenever any population of student is subjected to a particular test in a written, oral or practice form, their scores distributed on a graph would take the form of a symmetrical bell-shaped normal 
probability curve. The advantages of this type of grading system are it is a straightforward and clearly specifies what grades students will receive. Another advantage is that it present grade information when teachers are too lenient in their grading. Along with advantages, the limitations of relative grading are that this system of grading do not give the information to the student, teachers and parents exactly what the learners have mastered in a particular subject and how much. It challenges the inconsistency of grading learner's performance when a learner secured A or B grade in one class and secured B or C in another class with the same subject. The most prominent limitation is that there can be considerable variability among reference groups. Some classes will be relatively high achiever and some relatively low achievers. Second under interactive form is absolute grading. Absolute grading means it involves a competition of a student's performance to a specific level of performance which in another word known as criterion referenced and often associated with dichotomous conditions like pass, fail, mastery, non-mastery. This type of grading draw the boundary scores for different grades decided in advance of the examination. Unlike relative grading where a fixed number of learners are put in each category of grades, in absolute grading a range of scores is put against each grade and there is no fixed hard and fast rule to put a fixed percentage of learners under each grade. In absolute grading a situation may arise when no learner get F grade and the average learners may fall within 50 to 59 score range. One of the most common absolute grading system is the traditional percentage based system. In it, grades are converted from percentage of marks. The major limitation of absolute grading system is that there is considerable variability in the level of difficulty among tests and other academic assignments assigned by the teachers. It happen because sometimes the test data developed by the teachers are extremely difficult or relatively very easy or some teachers are more rigorous in their grading compared to other teachers. In this case, students of a class got average percentage of marks whereas students get more percentage of marks in the case of a lenient teacher. Therefore, it is difficult to interpret or compare the meaning of scores based on absolute standard in a consistent manner. Next is marking system. The process of teaching learning can be measured in the evaluation of student performance. In this marking system, the examination results of every paper are expressed on a scale ranging from 0 to 100. It determines the potential of an individual in a particular area. It is understood by everyone that whatever the learner has learned over a period of time can be expressed in terms of his performance and the performance is measured in numerical scores. That is why marks are defined as cumulative grades that reflect a student's academic progress during a specific period of instructions. It is assumed that to provide feedback about student achievement, marks are assigned to them. In some educational institution, marks are assigned both for academic and non-academic work and students can be compared according to their academic and non-academic achievement on the basis of their feedback. The advantages of marking system are it is very easy way to express the learning outcomes or performance of students in a numerical scores. It is very easy to compare the scores of a number of students and to select and admit them into different courses. Because of its easy processing or scoring, question on its validity always arises. With advantages, some disadvantages of marking system are its unreachability of assumption on which it is based, it is difficult to express human abilities in a numerical scores. The most important disadvantage is the error related to the practice of marking and this may be because of marker variability and subject variability. It is a fact that reliability of an objective type or fixed type question answer is challenged even if the same question is checked and 
marked by different examiners. But in the case of an essay type or open-ended question, it does not provide reliability as well as objectivity. There is no certain answer for awarding a particular score to all students and this can always be in question. In subject variability, it is difficult to compare the scores of students from different subjects. For example, an art stream student securing 65% marks in economics may be inferior to a student of science securing 70% marks in a science and student of science securing 70% marks in aggregate may not be equal or compared with that of a student of literature securing the same percentage of marks in aggregate. Now let's discuss the main functions of marking. It simplifies marking decisions and make it possible to compare marks with other students. There is no apparent need for deliberation over what cut of scores should determine if students get this or that grade. Comparison of students with a standard already formed. In this marking system, when all students come between A or F grade, then it is relevant to say whether a student attains a defined standard of achievement, but such a system requires some prior knowledge of the difficulty of the test and what level of achievement or performance is reasonable to expect. The ability levels of incoming students remain fairly constant and that test remain comparable in validity and difficulty level. With the change of time, teacher would like to work hard and would like to see their improvement in marks and grades and this motivates teachers to continue working to improve their effectiveness. Another function of marking system is to compare students to themselves on the basis of their aptitude. Here marks are assigned to compare the level of achievement with their potential. In this students with high potential or aptitude score high marks because they would be achieving at their potential. Those with high aptitude and average achievement would get lower grades since they would be achieving below their potential. But students with the average aptitude and average achievement would get high grades since they would be considered to be achieving at their potential. Having all these good functions, there are several drawbacks in this marking system like the system fails to consider differences due to overall ability level of this class, Establishing a standard format for comparison of standard of students is not an easy job because what is reasonable for one school may not be reasonable for another school and may vary from time to time and the same standard should not be maintained for a gifted or special children. So, to conclude, we can say that the acceptance of grading system in place of marking is an honest submission of our inability to assess the total quality of human being. Both the practice of providing marks or grade are concerned with reporting and interpreting examination results. Learning outcome is measured and expressed quantitatively while Grading is related to the quality of performance or we can say that the learning outcomes are expressed in qualitative terms. Grades provide an overall estimate of human ability and are not influenced by the variation in subjects. But it is up to the school which system they want to adopt for their students. Thank you.